Really? So the new air conditioning system in the here is is, is working well, huh? Much better than the old one. <laughs> License hearing and public safety committee is called to order. Roll call. Alderperson Barb Feldy, I am here and chair. Uh, Betty Ackley is excused. Uh, Dean Decker here. Leslie Laster here, and Amanda Salazar is um, excused. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's on, it's on, it's on. I just have it up. There you okay. go. All right. Introduction of committee members, staff, and guests. Leslie, you want to start? Leslie Laster, District 8. Dean Decker, District 6. Barb Feldy, District 1, and chair of the committee. Oh, wait a minute. Chuck Adams, city attorney. Ms. Feldy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from June 30th. I'll second. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And I vote, I vote yay and we are approved. Okay. Chuck is already at the lectern, so we're going to turn it over to General Ordinance Number 10-2227621, an ordinance adjusting the for forfeiture ranges in Sheboygan Municipal Code, um, 18 through 47, dangerous and vicious dog, uh, 66 through 2, nuisances, 70. Seven, marijuana and 70-8 possession of drug paraphernalia and adopting an updated bond schedule for use in municipal court proceedings and turn it over to Chuck thanks so uh, basically what this ordinance does is a couple of things is noted it changes some of the forfeiture ranges and it updates the bond schedule uh, basically, what happens is whenever we have uh, an ordinance that includes a penalty, where there's a violation and a penalty, in the ordinance there is a range, let's say 50 to $500 or 100 to $250 that is in the ordinance. And the judge must pick a forfeiture from within that range when she sentences somebody or the prosecutor, if they w work out an agreement with the defendant, uh, that it has to be within that range. Um, that doesn't, that's exclusive of court costs. Uh, there is also what's called a bond schedule, which takes a number within that range and makes that sort of the standard penalty. So when an officer writes a citation, the officer doesn't get to pick, you know, where in the range it's going to be. The officer writes it for the amount on that, on that bond schedule. Uh, and so you pass that bond schedule generally uh, as well, and we, we, do, we update them every so often. And so what will happen then if the person, you know, just chooses not to contest their ticket, that'll be the amount they have to pay. Uh, and like I mentioned, it tends to be sort of the general amount, and then um, if it goes up or down from that general amount, it's because there's either been mitigating circumstances or extenuating circumstances to do that. This ordinance, updates the forfeiture ranges in four sections of the code and then adopts an updated bond schedule just to sort of uh, fix those things. Uh, the police department was involved in this as was the municipal court. Uh, the judge was involved as well. 
uh, and the specific adjustments uh, in the dangerous and vicious dog uh, section, uh, just some arrangements to sort of make sure that there is uh, sort of a parallel, that there is a certain penalty structure for vicious dog citations, which are more serious, and a certain, uh, a lesser range for citations that are dangerous dog citations, which are, are less uh, serious. And for the most part in these cases, um, it's the bond schedule is, the bond amount is not changing, it's just the, the forfeiture range. And part of the reason we're doing this is when this was originally written, the idea was there might be some differences and there were some violations that at least conceivably could have been written either way, but as we've sort of experienced this ordinance, we realized that that isn't the case, and so it, it just seemed to be much more fair to have it's this way if it's a dangerous dog, it's this way if it's a vicious dog. Uh, nuisance violations uh, in 66-2, uh, basically reducing the range of penalties for nuisances that, that are not noise related. So there are, there are a few things like long grass and, and some other things like that that this is meant to cover. And uh, part of the reason for that is, is was also a concern that uh, citations weren't necessarily being issued if they ended up being too high of a penalty. And uh, there's already other sort of uh, financial uh, things that come, like if, if the city has to go cut your grass, you pay the city for that service in addition to the forfeiture. So it did not seem that uh, the forfeitures needed to be as high. And so that, that range is uh, decreased as well. And then decreasing the uh, range for uh, marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, the, when the city first passed a, an ordinance um, regarding marijuana and drug paraphernalia, in essence decriminalizing because otherwise it would have had to be handled on a criminal matter, um, decriminalizing certain violations, not all violations. Uh, the penalty range at that time was 250 to 1,000, and now it's being decreased to 50 to 500. The bond amount is actually not changing. Um, and so then the bond schedule itself, a couple of uh, bond amounts, again, changing related to the vicious and dangerous dogs, uh, related to the non-noise related nuisances. Um, it updates the bond schedule to reflect changes that were made, uh, that you made to chapter 102. Uh, when you updated the city's automated garbage and recycling system, uh, some updates related to the electric scooter provisions that probably should have been just handled at that time, but we missed them, and then making some other technical corrections that we've found addressing typos and things like that. So we are recommending uh, that the ordinance uh, be adopted. Anybody want to make a motion? Just quick. So, um, just since the chief is on the line, um, you're okay with everything on these. This, this, this is in line with you. You feel is, is appropriate. Yep, I fully support it. Um, and like Chuck said, we worked with both his office and the municipal court um, to make sure everybody um, was on the same page with it. And really, that's all we're trying to do is create some consistency in the ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Well, then I'll make a motion to adopt. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay, and then we're looking at um, resolution number 3721-22. 71621 submitting submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2022. So uh, basically we are uh, recommending um, holding a permanent change of premises application made by SS North Star. Uh, that's that's the former uh, Barbie's North Star bar on the north side. Uh, they have to deal with some permit issues. Uh, before they can be granted. Uh, and then also granting the Goodside Grocery Co-op's license. Uh, there was just a typo on the, uh, on the document, and so it's just showing that it is a class, quote, A, unquote, fermented malt beverage license. Uh, and then granting all the remaining licenses on the RO. Okay, anybody got any okay. questions? 
I will make a motion to uh, adopt as per staff recommendations. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Okay. Um, next meeting date will be July 28th, 2021. And um, I'd like a little bit of discussion about uh, moving the meeting to the downstairs conference room. Will that work, Kathy? Yeah, so the, the question really comes, because I think when you do hearings, you're gonna wanna be in here. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, do you wanna just move back and forth depending on whether you're going to have hearings or, and if you're fine with that, that's, that's fine. I think you want this space if you're gonna do hearings because the recording requirements are a little more stringent for that and you're gonna want the higher quality that you get here for those things, but for a normal meeting, the only thing then you just have to be prepared for is somebody's got to make sure that the recording is happening. I don't think WSCS is coming to every single meeting in every single room. So you just have to be, one of you's got to do that. I'll, I'll <laughs> have to learn something new. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and Kathy or Attorney Adams, how much time ahead of time will we know whether there's going to be a hearing and we need to move it? Well, we, we generally send that um, out to you in advance. You know, you get the agenda in advance from Kathy. That, that's, you'll you generally know that by then. Um, okay. Sometimes you'll know well in advance of that as well. You're, you're, the only times you're really gonna have a hearing is when we put it on the agenda because somebody was denied now that you're not hearing all of those held licenses anymore. So we, we are recommending, you know, there is one that we're denying. So if that person contests it, we could have a hearing as soon as four weeks from now, but not in two weeks. Okay, okay. Will that work for you, Kathy, for yeah. scheduling the, which I room? Because when I email you the draft agenda, I should know by then, and that's usually on the Wednesday before okay. the meeting, and then that's a draft. Okay. That should work. All right, work for you? Works for me. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a little, little more. Okay. When we've got this big, huge room for. <laughs> so we will go with that. Um, do we need a motion on that, or just no, no for discussion okay. only? Yeah. yeah, it's just for discussion. discussion. Okay. 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 All right. Then I need a motion to. Uh, oh, one one thing just to, that I want to mention again about the next meeting before you adjourn. Uh -huh. Just a reminder. Um, it was pointed out to me. I should probably remind everybody that if, if you want to be remote, you need to let the clerk know. We're not, gonna assume, we're not putting it on the agenda anymore that you're going to be remote. You need to let the clerk know at least three days in advance. She is gonna have a system if you wanna sort of be on standby uh, for remote, but uh, because we have to put that on the agenda and the agenda has to be out in enough time, uh, we, the, the clerk needs to have that information at least 72 hours before the meeting. Can we add that into the minutes, please, so that the people that aren't here today yeah. will know that, that, that they need to get that advance yeah. notice? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Looking for to adjourn? To adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 And I vote aye. So we are adjourned. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. Okay, say, say you're sitting at home and you're, I don't feel very good. I, I don't, but I'd like 